Welcome to Joshism's Two Pesos. Today I wanted to show everyone something that I discovered about my CO2 system. When I designed my aquarium plumbing, one goal I had in mind was to create negative pressure or a vacuum pressure in my CO2 line so that the filter would be drawing water out of my CO2 tubing instead of pumping water into it. All check valves eventually fail. In theory, I should not need a check valve because water is not being pushed in. To do this, I needed to install the CO2 reactor before the canister filter. Most people install their CO2 reactors after the filter. I did not want water to enter into my CO2 setup. My canister filter is too powerful for my two surface skimmers because the surface skimmers were sucking in too much air and so I would have to adjust the flow in order to avoid that. At this limited rate, water would flow from my tubing into my bubble counter. One day I decided to cover my surface skimmers up in order to add more flow into my aquarium. I was testing another regulator that I was selling and to my surprise, I discovered that water was not flowing into my bubble counter as usual. In fact, it was sucking air into my reactor. Previously, I thought I had failed because water kept on coming out of the tube, but now I discovered that my predictions were successful. It just needed enough power to create a vacuum. Because my plumbing is one and a half inches, it takes a lot of power in order to create a vacuum. The water siphoned from the aquarium puts too much pressure on the CO2 line, and if the canister filter pump is not pulling enough water out, then it would not have enough vacuum power to pull the water out of the CO2 line. So my next step is to add coarse sponges into my Sergi style CO2 reactor, which will hopefully block the CO2 from entering the center chamber, which leads out to the canister filter. I was thinking that I would have to install another set of skimmer and lily pipes to my plumbing. Then I had another idea. My plan is to remove one skimmer and add a ball valve to the remaining skimmer so that I can adjust the flow rate. I'd replace the second skimmer with a normal lily intake. By doing this, it won't be able to suck in any air when I open up my canister filter all the way. Some folks online argue that installing the CO2 reactor before the filter will cause premature wear and tear to the canister filter pump. And another argument is that the CO2 from the reactor entering the filter will kill the beneficial bacteria inside the filter, which would lead to ammonia, and then eventually cause the entire aquarium to crash. I guess I'll have to be the guinea pig, and I'll update everyone if my aquarium crashes. So far it's been good. My thinking is that even if the CO2 reactor was installed traditionally after the canister filter, there's already CO2 from the aquarium entering the canister filter. It might not be as much as the additional CO2 from installing it my way, but there should be enough to turn a drop checker green. My other thought was that if the beneficial bacteria in the canister filter can survive 30 parts per million of CO2 from the aquarium, they can probably handle a bit more from the CO2 reactor. Someone would have to sit down and figure this out scientifically. With microscope samples of beneficial bacteria in water with 30 parts per million of CO2 before the canister filter and however much parts per million of CO2 after the filter. And what we would look for in these samples is whether there would be a die off with the beneficial bacteria after the filter. I doubt that there'd be enough to kill off the beneficial bacteria colonies. For now, it's all just theory. Thank you for watching. I hope that you benefited from my information. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. So if you liked or if you learned anything from my content, please do me a huge favor by clicking the like button and subscribe to my channel. This is Joshism and that's my two pesos.